No. No buzz. Uh, Just Bees Book Club. And listen, Just Bees is what I'm talking about, right? I, oop. Oh, God. No, you can't really see it, but all bee earrings. Little bee. Oh, these are bees all over my shirt. Um, I'm talking today. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, about uh, The Color of the Sky is the Shape of the Heart. I, um, a young adult novel by Chessel that is coming out in April of 2022, I think, um, as of when I'm recording this. Um, it is fine. Um, it is a, yeah, it's a young adult novel. I think it was originally published in 2016 in Japanese, I believe. Let's see. Yes, 2016 is the copyright, initial copyright. Um, apparently the Japanese title was, um, uh, Jini no Pazaru, Patsuru, Jini no Patsuru. Um, this this one is coming out next year, as of this recording. Um, it is about a young girl named Jinny. In the sort of present of the story, she is about to be expelled from a school in Oregon, where she is do 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 um sort of at a homestay with. A woman named Stephanie, who is a like children's book author. Um, the sort of like inciting action of the of the story is is her being threatened to be expelled from school. Um, she meets up with her friend, I believe, who's named Maggie, but I read that like two days ago. So, I, yep, Maggie, flip to the right page. Um, who she only talks to by like sitting next to her and writing. Um, it's very cute. Um, she, it sort of comes out that she, um, she's, um, Korean, born in Japan, um, so she is a Zainichi Korean person, um, she got expelled from her Korean school in Japan, ended up in Hawaii where she hated it because, um, she felt like everyone was trying to live in paradise all the time and it was miserable for her as somebody who, um, was not trying to live in paradise all the time. Um, and then she ended up in Oregon, where she is very uninterested in school. Um, but yeah, the bulk of the novel is set sort of in her past, where she, right, like, she goes to, I think, a hotel somewhere, and she's getting expelled, like, six months before graduation, so she's, like, probably 17 or 18-ish, I think, in that, um, in the sort of present day of the of this book um she so yeah she gets like a hotel and sort of writes out what happened to her in the korean school um and that's sort of the bulk of the novel is like that flashback sort of um structure to how she started you know she went to um to Japanese schools and throughout her like youth and she sort of like the the way that her consciousness shifted from being like I'm going to Korean school when I go to middle school because like I, that's where Koreans go to learning how to, that that was like sort of um, a racialized thing um, in Japan um, like a very yeah she talks about very young ages seeing right wing vans um shouting Korea go Koreans go home and like at a young age being like I can fool them by wearing my school uniform and then sort of like that internalizing based on stuff um it's it's like a high level um it reminded me quite a bit of Colorful by Eto Mori which uh, just came out in translation this year um that is a book about a a soul who wins the lottery to get to get a second chance at uh at the potential for rebirth um goes back down and takes the place of this kid named makoto um and sort of slowly like learns about um who who this soul was before dying and who makoto is and was um i i don't i think that book's good but like i kind of like escapes me like my memory I, it doesn't stick with me and i feel like the color of the sky is the shape of the heart is going to be kind of the same um i do appreciate how much this is a really competent 
um, like solidly written, solidly translated um, young adult novel about uh, race in Japan, which is, I think, not a thing that um, <laughs> a lot of Japanese writers talk about, to my knowledge. Um, definitely not one that is like widely celebrated in translation. Um, and I think that's um, that it does a good job of of being about that and being. Um, you know, the kind of forgettable young adult novel that it is that people like that aren't like me will probably enjoy more than I do. Um, but yeah, um, the like long and short of it is like there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, Jin, a lot of Ginny or yeah, I'll, I'll just call her Ginny because that's her Americanized name um, in Oregon. Um, it's a lot about her sort of like learning to think about her place in the world as a minoritized person um, and how she can affect it and how um, other things affect her. Like, there's a, one of the central things is, like, that the um, the school, the Korean school that she goes to has portraits of, of Kim Jong-il and Kim Il-sung. Um, like, everywhere and this is like a big point of contention for her because it also sort of takes place right around the um the moment when the north korean missile test happened where it, they they flew a missile over japan and it landed in the sea uh i mean also like i will say like this it opens with kind of a bang um it's like yeah that day was no different than any other high school was as cruel as ever in biology, the invisible boy in class, John, burst into tears and hid under the lab table again. He fell over on his back and cried like a baby, slapping his hands on the floor. This had happened before. John was known to have tantrums. He was way more sensitive than the average kid. Maybe seeing the, ana maybe seeing the anatomical diagram of a rabbit in the textbook had upset him. Maybe it was just that John was the most gentle-hearted boy in the world. High school really was a cruel place. Actually, it wasn't school, but the whole world. And like the world, class went on without a pause, or without pause, as if John didn't exist. And I'm going to skip some, because there's like, um, do to do, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, the teacher shot several looks at John. I happened to catch a glimpse of her face and felt absolutely horrible. Her eyes squinted as if they'd found a pesky tick living on in the sheets. Then, as if to say, I'm glad you're not my son, she turned her back and carried on as if John wasn't there. And so, class went on as usual. John cried louder. The world let out a hard laugh. John cried louder still. On the other side of the country, President Bush was sending troops into Iraq. On and on, John went. At the same time, my idol Michael Jackson was arrested on child molestation charges. John let out a wail, smacking his hands on the floor as if to split it open. Still, the dung beetle went on rolling turds into balls. Yep, this world was too beautiful for words. Um, that first chapter is, is kind of, that goes hard. Um, like, yeah, that that's good stuff. Um, I, generally, it, it feels very young adulty and... You know, that's fine. Um, there are some, like, formal things. Each chapter is, like, a page and a half to maybe four pages. There are bits that are, like, written like a screenplay. Um, I appreciate that. Um, but generally, I I don't know. I don't have a ton to say about the color of the sky is the shape of the heart. Um, there's a moment when that, that title phrase shows up. It's very... Um, it felt it feels like it's written to be poignant, but it feels more cute to me, if that makes sense. Um Yeah, I don't know. Um you can do a lot worse <laughs> with like young adult fiction. Um I think you can also do better, but um if you're reading young adult fiction, like seriously, you you probably get to the point where this is the best option you have for um too long. <laughs> Because, God, that voice is just unbearable to me sometimes. Um, yeah, I guess I'll shout out, like, Cemetery Boys, I think, is very, very, very good. Um, Aiden Thomas, Cemetery Boys, thumbs up from me, made me cry and everything. Um, that'll probably be out in paperback probably around the same time this book comes out um, in hardcover. Um, what else? Uh, 
No, nah, that's the only good young adult novel. Cemetery Boys and nothing else, unfortunately. Animorphs. Go read the Animorphs. They're doing graphic novel adaptations that are pretty good right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go read the Animorphs, man. <laughs> And don't do it with, like, those fucking weirdo podcasts that are, like, adults being like, I'm going to seriously analyze the, the Animorphs books or whatever, but but with jokes, because it's a podcast, and that's what you have to do for um, to get enough Patreon supporters to um, justify it or whatever. Just, just, just you know, have fun. Uh, check out the graphic novels. They're fun. Um, I don't know. Maybe check this book out. Maybe check out Colorful by Otomori. I don't... What is this? What is? What am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> Um, thanks for not watching. <laughs>